What about files? Welcome to Black Bear Forge, where I hope to educate, inspire, and spark the imagination of anybody who is interested in the ancient art and craft of blacksmithing. A file is really just a piece of hard steel with teeth cut in it. When you push it across a piece of softer material, it cuts it. Pretty simple, really. But there's a lot more to it than that. Today I hope to discuss the types of files, some general guidelines for using files, maintaining files, and storing files. But then by the end I also hope to talk about what I believe are the best files out there today and why I would avoid some of the biggest names in files from days past because they aren't as good as they used to be. But let's start with some of the types of files. For most of us, we are thinking of basically five shapes of files. And these are what would be called American pattern files. In other countries, you may have other options. And there are other options here in the US as well. But this is generally what you're buying when you're buying a file. You're buying a flat file, which is just flat on both sides and can either have teeth on both or one sides or no teeth so that it doesn't cut on the edge. That would be a safe edge file but just flat files, very useful, half round files, flat on one side, half round on the other, with a fairly sharp edge on the corners. A square file, so it's four flats, 90 degree corners. Triangular file, sometimes called a tapered file, or a saw file, and these are 60 degree edges. These are ideal for sharpening English pattern or European type handsaw teeth but also very useful in the blacksmith shop. And then there are round files, and that's just exactly what it is, round. Sometimes people refer to them as a rat tail file. Now as far as coarseness goes, files come in different levels of coarseness. A bastard file, which is a single cut file, is generally the coarsest file you'll find in a, an American pattern file. And this one says flat bastard on it. And that just means there's one row of teeth, they're very aggressive, very effective file. This one is a second cut, cut file, which means it's a little bit smoother. It's cut in both directions, and that takes some of the chatter out, makes a little smoother cut, but it is not as aggressive as a bastard file is. Then you get down to a smooth cut file. and That's a, the smoothest for fine finishing. It's not very aggressive. The teeth clog up easily. Really, you won't use a smooth file for much except final finishing work. If you try to do a lot of aggressive filing with this, you'll be really frustrated. But those are the basic files and the basis, basic coarsenesses. Flat, half round, square, triangular, round, and bastard cut, second cut, and smooth cut. And that's, that would be a huge assortment of files right there. That would be 15 files if you had one of each. And you don't really need one of each. But if you really want to complicate things, you can go on to Swiss pattern files. And those are available in the US. Now I don't keep a real wide variety of Swiss pattern files around the shop. I, most of what I have are smaller files, generally meant for jewelry work, but they come in handy for smaller blacksmithing. I don't even know what brand these are. I think they might be Grobe's, which is a very good brand of Swiss file. This set of needle files is Grobe. I don't know if you can see that in the video. Yeah, more or less. But there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 different profiles of file. There's different triangles, different flats, little tapered square files. This one's kind of diamond shaped files, lots and lots of different profiles in the Swiss pattern files. That's one of the things that makes them so useful. Again, they're generally thought of as jewelers files because they're, they tend to be smaller and more specialized, but you can get these up to about six inch file lengths, maybe some of them you can find in an eight inch. These are about uh, three inch needle files here. Needle files can be very handy when you need them. Don't use them often, but they can be handy. Now the Swiss files are graded differently. 
The Swiss files are rated not coarse, second cut, and smooth, but they are double aught, aught, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there's a lot more options in Swiss files. The double aught is essentially the equivalent of a bastard cut file, and then the six is the smoothest of the Swiss pattern files. So these are all good, useful files. Now what files should you have in the shop? Well, that really depends on what you're doing, but in a general blacksmith shop, I think relatively long, heavy files work better. They've got more mass, they, they don't stutter and chatter as much as a little light file. You get longer strokes, much more efficient. This one is a 14-inch uh, file. It's a very good, good size file if you can get them. And I'll talk about buying files here in a little while. But 14 to 16-inch files really move a lot of material. They aren't necessarily the most precise files if you're trying to get into tight spots. But I think if you could have 14-inch or, or even 12-inch files coarse cut files, coarse bastard type files in uh, flat and half round is a very good start to your file assortment. Then I'd go on to a square file probably and again a bastard cut or maybe a second cut in a square file and then maybe if you need them round files. But after that you know do you need a triangular file? It just depends on what you're doing. They're handy to have. If you buy a set from some place selling a set, you're probably going to get all of these and you may get them in different sizes. As you go to finer files, often I do go to a, a shorter one. I go to a, an 8 inch file in second and smooth cut files so I can get them into tighter spots and be a little bit more delicate with them. It just depends on what you want to have around the shop. Big heavy files get more work done faster. Smaller, lighter files are more detail-oriented, but files can be expensive. So buying an assortment of five files in coarse cut, 14-inch files, and then in 12 and 10-inch, and then getting them all in second cut and all in smooth, that's a big investment in files, and you really don't need that many. So if you just buy some 14-inch flat and half round in coarser files and then maybe go to a 10 or an 8 inch in square flat half round and triangular in a second cut file that's probably a pretty good assortment after that then maybe for more detailed work you might want some Swiss pattern files you might want the little needle files I keep a pretty big assortment of needle files with wooden handles that are nice and comfortable to use in this roll here, good way to store them. And I don't use the needle files that much. Most of these needle files are about 10 years old and they'll probably last me another 10 years because I only use them a couple of hours a year. These aren't something I use day in and day out. When working with a file, I know that's sque squealy, I'm sorry about that, they only cut on the push stroke. They don't cut on the back stroke. So the ideal is that you lift up, return, and push. Lift up, return, and push. Now, in practical terms, what I typically do is I apply pressure when I push, and I leave it in contact when I come back, but I don't apply pressure. And you can hear that it's only trying to cut in the, the push stroke, and that helps me with efficiency and accuracy that I'm not jumping around trying to get the file back in position. I keep my perspective better. This also is a good time to think about how high your vice is. You want a natural comfortable position when you're filing and you want to be able to file level. So if your file is high you're going to do this. If your file is low you're going to do that. So a, a vice that's about elbow height, maybe a little bit shorter seems to be the ideal for this. But that holds with pretty much every file that you should only be cutting in the push stroke. That's the, the way they're designed to cut. 
if you drag them back too hard, if you apply pressure as you drag back, you're going to wear your files out faster. And files aren't cheap. Files will eventually get little chips of metal stuck in there and that will leave scratches on your work, which is especially detrimental if you're a knife maker and you've just finished filing something and taking one or two more strokes and then you put a deep scratch across because you've got something stuck in here. And a file card, which is just a real short stiff wire brush, will help clean some of the, the junk out of the teeth of your files. So that's a good thing to have on hand. If your file is properly sized and you're using a coarser file, they're not going to load up as bad. These little uh, smoother files really load up a lot faster than the coarse files do. Another way to help prevent loading in the first place is some people will take a soapstone or chalk and just fill the space between the teeth. The teeth will still cut, but there's less room for the the junk to get stuck in there. And a third way that I have seen some people clean a file is with a little piece of brass with some little teeth and they kind of scrub on that. I've never tried that so I don't know how well that works. Now files are hard steel so they are fairly durable but you can wear them out even when you're not using them. You'll notice that right now I have these setting on a piece of wood instead of the steel bench. That's just a little bit better. Probably they're not going to dull up setting them on the steel bench. What really dulls a file fast is if you throw them all together in a drawer or a toolbox or a bucket and you let the files rub together as you move them or as the bench vibrates while you're doing something else on the bench files touching files is the fastest way to ruin them. And it's one reason I don't buy files from McMaster Car anymore, and I hate singling them out, but over the years I have complained over and over again about them shipping files. I'll buy three half round files, and because it's not a whole box, they don't come in the box separated the way the manufacturer intended. They just throw them all together in a plastic bag and those three files rub together all the way cross country in the back of the FedEx truck or the airplane or whatever. So they're wearing out on their journey. So I've quit buying files from them. I've complained they still ship them that way. I'm just not going to buy files from them anymore. If the person shipping the files doesn't value them, find somebody else to buy your files from. Buy them from some place that will wrap them in paper. They come originally and there's just a single piece of paper between each file. But this file can't rub up against the other files in the package and therefore they are not worn out when you get them. So when you store files, don't store them in a drawer unless you can separate them or in a bucket just all thrown together. I do have some in a bucket that are files that I've never used before that they're all brand new just waiting to till I need them and I wrap them in paper just like this and then I stack them in the bucket so they can't rub together. It's not the best storage perhaps but the files aren't being damaged it's just not well organized. The way I like to store them in the shop is hanging up so that I can see what I have. And these files don't touch each other hanging in this rack. Now this rack is not big enough for some of my biggest files, my uh, 14 and 16 inch round and square files don't actually fit in this slot so I need to uh, alter the rack a little bit for that. But you can see how the the files is just too slats of wood, they're separated about a half inch apart or three quarters of an inch apart. And here are some of my round files. These are actually chainsaw files. I've just drilled holes in there so I can get more in the same place without them, any risk of them rubbing up together. And then this rack has pegs in front that I can hang other junk from. So it holds quite a few tools. Now another type of file this is a Riffler file and it is bent. This part here is all handle. It's just this much file and they're good for getting inside little dies and delicate things. I don't use them very often. This is something I've got two or three different versions of this. Square, flat, triangular. 
and something that I probably will never buy another set because I don't use them often enough. These will last me the rest of my career, but they can come in handy if it's something you need. Really, there are so many files out there. If you bought a file in every shape, in every size, in every coarseness, and for every purpose that somebody makes a file for, you would probably have hundreds of files and have spent tens of thousands of dollars buying them. You don't need to get that into it. I've, got a, I've been collecting files for years. Some of the ones on the rack are five or ten years old and they still work because they don't get used that often. A 14 inch flat file I wear out a lot faster because that's the one I go to day in and day out. That and the half round file I use continuously. If I only could have two files it'd be a 14 inch flat and a 14 inch half round. As we talk about storing files Having a tool roll of some sort that you can put files in, and this this is made for an assortment of half round, or round files that I took to a class that I just needed a bunch of round files to make specific tools. A lot of them have been taken out and haven't gotten put back in here because I'm not traveling. But if you're traveling or need to put files in a drawer or put them in the bucket, a tool roll like this is really nice to have. That's how I keep a lot of my needle files. Most needle files will come in a little plastic case and as long as that holds up that works great. This is a little set of diamond needle files I've probably had for 20 years. So storing them in a, a tool roll if you don't have a way to hang them on the wall is a good way to keep them separate and keep them from rubbing together and that works very nicely. I'm lucky enough my wife has the ability to sew tool rolls like this so when I needed this she sewed that up for me. Now the good news is when you buy them, they typically do come, if you buy it quantities, they come in boxes. Of course, some of these boxes have seen better days. This box is falling apart, but these are all wrapped in paper, so I can still store them in the paper, or if I can get the box taped back together, I can store them in the box. And that's not a bad way to store them if you've got shelves or cabinets or something like that that you can store files in. When it comes to buying files, what are your choices? There are quite a few manufacturers of files out there. The big, big names, of course, are Nicholson and Simmons, at least here in the U.S. And Nicholson files used to be the best files you would ever want to use. You never needed to find anything better than that. Unfortunately, Nicholson files aren't so good anymore. The Nicholson no longer makes files in the U.S. And while you can certainly have good things made in other countries, their decision to outsource clearly was also a decision to allow for lower quality to maintain a cheaper price. So now Nicholson files are made in other countries. I know some come from Brazil and some come from Mexico. I'm not sure where else, but I think Nicholson has files made in three or four other countries. Now here are a couple of new Nicholson files, not new today but files I bought new fairly recently. Uh, this half round file is from Brazil and the flat file was one made in Mexico. So this is what you would get if you're buying from most industrial suppliers today. Now, I don't know if you can see this on there. I think you can. This side of the file is chipped horribly just big chunks of material just blowing off of that, chipping and falling apart. This side of the file has been worn smooth. The use of one side versus the other is essentially the same. I use these files for getting inside this little detail on hinges. And depending on which side of the hinge I'm working on, I use one side or the other. So I wear a the edges on a half round file pretty evenly or get use the same number of strokes. But this file from Brazil has just worn out completely different. Well, one, this is one day's worth of work. I did about six pairs of these hinges. Both, uh, both leaves of the hinge, two hinges per, per pair, so that's four, 24 elements is all this filed, and this is the damage and how worn out and uneven it is. I mean, 
this is either lousy material or lousy heat treat, maybe both. And so the the Nicholson files from Brazil, I just don't ever want to own another one. I don't see any reason to use them. They're not worth my trouble. They're just more frustration than anything else. Now this flat file has been also working on the same project. It has been used on several projects since. It is starting to look dull, but has probably done five times the work that the Brazilian half round one did. And this is a Nicholson made in Mexico. So my impression is that Nicholson files made in Mexico are slightly better than the ones made in Brazil, but neither one is very good. Now I've just bought a Simmons file. Simmons is another good old American file company that has a good reputation. I noticed this one is made in Honduras. So again, I have no idea what the quality is going to be like. I'll have to give it some time to find out. Hopefully it takes me a, a month or two of use to find out if it's a good file or not. If I know it's a bad file, it'll be in a day or two because it'll start to be dull that fast. And files should last longer than that. Now, some of the nicer files I have acquired lately, this half round is a Grobay file, and it's Grobay USA. Grobay is a Swiss company, and they make American pattern files, and these were made in the U.S. Apparently now they are not anymore. A lot of the American pattern files are now made in China and theoretically they are better than the Nicholson files being made in Brazil and Mexico but I haven't bought any of them so I'm going to have to try that out. Grobe Swiss pattern files which is what they're really famous for I understand are now being made in Italy and are probably a superior file. It's just going to be hard to get them in these bigger sizes because the Swiss pattern files don't tend to come in big file sizes. So really where does that leave you for buying good files? It's getting harder and harder to find quality files for blacksmithing work. The junky files that are imported, the Nicholson's from Brazil, are useful. If you only use a file for an hour a week, that file is going to last you a year. If you use a file for eight hours a day, that file's probably not going to last you a month. It just depends on what you're doing, how hard you work with them. I use files quite a bit, so I need good performance from my files. And finding brand new, new manufactured files that you can just order out of a catalog is getting harder and harder. Again, I want to try some of the Grobe files from China to find out how they work. See if I can find some of the Grobe Swiss pattern files. And another company I'd like to look into, but I haven't found a U.S. dealer yet, is I think Frederick Dick. They are a German manufacturer, and I think their files are still made in Germany, and they might be some outstanding files. But I need to see if I can find a U.S. distributor for them, or I'm going to have to import them. Maybe that's worth my time. We'll see. But a good file can cost $20 or $30, or a large file can cost $20 or $30, whether it's a good file or a bad file. So I don't want to spend that kind of money on one that's just junk. So what's the option? The option today is to go either online or go to big tool shows where people are selling vintage tools and look for new old stock files. This is a box of Kearney and Foot files who it was bought out by the Nicholson company. It also says Nicholson on there. So this is a nice set of 14 inch, half round, made in the U.S. Kearney and Foot files, probably made 40 or 50 years ago, maybe longer, that have never been used. That's new old stock. You can find new old stock Nicholson files. I've got some here. These are some smaller half round files. So the new old stock files can be very nice when you can find them. And the last time I really found a good deal on these, we were at Handworks, which is a hand tool woodworking show in Amana, Iowa. They only do it every few years, doesn't happen all the time, but there was a tool seller there whose only business was tracking down hordes of old tools that had never been used, never been sold, and he had boxes and boxes of new old stock files, and I bought quite a few. I've just I'm not even sure what all I have now, what brands they are. 
I've got assortments in boxes. Things aren't necessarily what what they were labeled. This says distant, but I've got a Nicholson square file in here. But I bought three hundred dollars worth of files from him because they may not be available the next time I run into this guy. So buying new old stock files, you got to kind of stock up. And I hate even sharing this secret because now all of you guys are going to be looking for the same files I'm looking for. These Grobay files that I just got, which are outstanding files, they're Grobay USA, so that's a new old stock file. When I bought it, I wasn't, didn't realize Grobays weren't made in the U.S. anymore, so I consider I got lucky on this box that it still only had three files in it. And I was actually paying less for new old stock files that are superior files than what I was paying new for a lousy Nicholson file. Like I say, the a 14 inch half round Nicholson is about $25. I think I paid about $15 a piece for these and they're way better files. So you can get some good deals buying new old stock files. And I've got piles of them back here. I don't know if I have enough to last the rest of my life, but I don't really have to buy files on a regular basis. I don't even know what this is. I found these on eBay. They came from Macedonia. I think I just cut it, cut into the original box there. Oh well. Um, but these are some kind of a a new old stock file. I hope. Very well packaged. There we go. And these are a flat file that has a safe edge on one side. These are a fairly smooth file. And it says made in Switzerland, but I can't read the brand. So these might be old Grobay files. Very nice file. I think this is a Swiss pattern hand file because it's parallel sided and it tapers in this direction. At this point, I'll take whatever I can get that gets the job done and I just have to think about it when I'm using them and try and find the right file for the job because I'm not always going to have the same assortment buying new old stock files. But it is the way to go now, in my opinion, if you can find them. If not, you're stuck with Simmons, Nicholson, maybe the, the newer Grobays that are made in China or India might be good files. I'm going to need to try some to find out, but they're harder to find. Simmons and Nicholson files are easy to come by. Another word on new old stock files is beware of new old stock files. What's old stock to one person may not be to somebody else. I bought this box of Nicholson's. The box looks just like an old box of Nicholson's that are made in the U.S. They haven't changed the box as much. I should have been keyed off by the fact that it has a barcode on the side of the box. I should have paid more attention to that in the eBay auction, but I missed that. Probably if it's got a barcode, they aren't old enough to be U.S. made files. And sure enough, if you read the side of the barcode, it says, Made in Brazil, February 13th, 2017. So these are essentially brand new files, just like I could buy from any industrial supplier, and they are the same junk. This was a waste of money. I might just give these away to somebody, I don't know, take them to the Rocky Mountain Smiths Conference next week and put them in the, the iron and the hat. But they probably aren't worth my trouble to put a handle on. Which is the last thing I want to mention, put handles on your files. If you use hand, files without and you hold them like this and they catch, you're going to jam that into your hand. You're going to hurt yourself. Never use a file without a handle on it. Wooden file handles are pretty cheap. They can be reused for two or three times before they don't stay on anymore. And even the, after that, you could glue it on one more time if you had to. Some people like golf balls for files, file handles. That works. There's probably some make-do file handles, old broom handles and shovel handles you can just cut and stick on there. Something to give you better control, something you can hold on to and be able to steer the file the way you want but mostly so you don't hurt yourself. Be safe. So best of luck in your search to find good quality files. 
But no matter what you end up with, even if they aren't the best files, take care of them, store them properly, put a handle on them. They'll last longer, you'll get better use out of them. And files are an extremely effective tool to have in the blacksmith shop. I highly recommend you have an assortment of them. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you can. If you haven't hit that subscribe button before, go ahead and do that. That way you know when more videos are coming out. It costs nothing to subscribe. It's absolutely free. Then head out to the shop, make something, do a little filing maybe, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.